Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Andrew Turner, founder and host of the G&T Sessions podcast. And today, we don't just have one guest, we have two guests. Hello, JP and Darren. How are you? Oh, good, I thank am. you. Good to see you. And nice to see that you've got your hat on today, JP, just, just for a change. <laughs> Always, yeah. I know it's a bit of a favorite thing, isn't it? It's a bit of a favorite kind of like, exactly, it's kind of like a, a signature style, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not going to put my hat I'm not going to put my hat on yet, but maybe maybe later on in the episode we might put a hat D on. Depends how crazy it gets. Yeah. And hopefully Darren's got his secret hat ready to put it on later as well. So but we'll we'll there'll be a grand reveal later on in the episode. Yeah, so great to see you and thanks for giving us the time today. Um I know you're very very busy and um appreciate you coming on the show. Um obviously what what we do in the GNT sessions we actually um talk about growth and technology. Uh, with gifted and talented people and um, actually I came across the stuff that you're working on which I know we're going to reveal in a second um, actually on that that kind of that social media platform called I think it was Instagram there was there was a kind of a, like a little a little sketch where I think JP was talking to himself in different parts oh, yeah. of a room oh, in yeah. a kitchen there's like one person had got a hat on and the other person hadn't got a hat on and he was asking like these different questions like like a bit like this kind of this session today so um it was very funny though. It was like a, it was a bit of a comedy sketch, a bit like a comedy sketch, but for um, maybe for the kind of organisations that you help out. So I thought, you know, what, why not? But like, have a chat with you guys and see if you want to come on the show. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Andrew. We've um, been told before that we're, so we're turned, entertainers where, where, more than anything else. So there you go. <laughs> oh, is that so? So you're going to be doing the, the kind of juggling later then? Yeah. Yeah, we might. Yeah, why not? Uh, uh, so where? Hey, so where are you? Um, live session. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like fire, fire juggling. Um, so where are you joining us from today then? Whereabouts are you joining us from to the episode? Uh, I'm in East London. Uh, just to keep it balanced, I'm in West London. So there you go. I okay. know where you are. <laughs> London. <laughs> well, well now I'm, I'm on the South Coast today, so I'm, I'm near the All beach. Right. So um, it's not mm. it's not Silicon Beach or anything like that, but um, it's a bit stony. But anyway. Yeah, no, so, so in terms of... Um, Today's episode, I suppose, you know, one of the things I was quite interested in, in, in your, what you're working on is, is really, I suppose, it's, it's, you know, I can see it really resonated with me about, you know, me being a founder and a co-founder of a few different businesses historically was some of the things that your kind of, uh, I suppose, your hypotheses um, and your, uh, your thought process and also your challenges, I suppose, to mm. people of that kind of, that, that kind of nature. And it, I suppose it really struck me quite, um, positively, actually, that you've got kind of a fresh perspective on some of the kind of the classic conversations that seem to happen. So now, as we all know, you know, there's this thing called the tech industry, which is now yeah. sexy and magnetic, and everybody wants to be a tech, you know, billionaire or billionaire or trillionaire or zillionaire. Um, but how do you get there? Yeah, it's, also, it's not all about the money, but obviously about the journey and how you get there as well and experience stuff. So I suppose. Starting off with, I mean, what, 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 what's, what's your perspective on that kind of point? I mean, what, what are you seeing in the, the tech scene, in the startup scene, in the people that you're interacting with? Yeah, so, so there's a big startup scene, big I would startup. say, in London, in UK in general, and in Europe. And we work a lot with, um, not only with Europe, but also with Latin America. And I feel like there's this, like, myth. I don't know if it's movies or series or what, that people have like a light bulb moment and then they go and build this thing and then, you know, a rush of people download the app and that is like, and that's how you created Facebook, right? Um, and, and we believe that it's completely like, it's a fallacy. It's just like a fantasy of like a story people like to tell about how to start up. Um, and, and, you know, stats will tell you that, right? You know, at 70 something percent of startups in the early stage fail because just there's no market need for what they're doing, right? So I thought it was more than that, I thought it was 90%. Yeah, well, more, it depends know. on who you talk to, right? But it's a big number, <laughs> it's bad, right? whatever it is. Yeah, yeah it's not one percent, yeah, it's, a, it's the wrong yeah. number, yeah, it's higher. It's a yeah. big killer. If it were a virus, it would be like, okay, should we address this one? Um, <laughs> so the way we typically start is from the back. Um, like we say, what's the point of you even thinking about building anything? What's the point of even talking to a developer? 
if you don't have a waiting list of people that you, that they say they have a need for this, right? That's the starting place. And it's, you know, it's not the easiest way to like talk to a founder and, and to get around it. You know, most founders think that, you know, the way to get to funding is through access. Just give me your network of investors. There's so many people out there with network selling network mm. of investors and so forth. And you know, when you're when you're doing that, you don't really care. Like look at the nature of the business. You don't really care about the startup. You just want to separate the wheat from the chaff, right? And then play with the shaft to like get investors and get paid. But mm -hmm. the way we go around it is like it's not a process of validation. Building a waiting list is a process of transformation. By building a waiting list, you go and talk to customers. You figure out what they want. But more importantly, you change your idea. Your idea is just like a thread. I say there's, in startup... Like, well, you, 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 validate, you, validate, you validate your idea, don't you? You validate your Yeah, idea. but you change it also, right? You're, you're pushed mm, to change. Yeah, you yeah. had some founders that have like, walked change. into the room. The point is the change. Exactly. Yeah. The point is the change. Yeah. And I, I use this analogy all the time, which is this like... I don't know if you've seen the Karate Kid movie. I love Karate movies and I love analogies. And I, I use this same analogy all the time. You know, in Karate Kid, the, Miyagi tells the Karate Kid, it's like, you need to paint the fence, right? And there's this huge fence. And the guy's there painting the fence in a very particular way. And he's like, when is, when is Karate going to come into this movie, right? I thought this was about a kid learning Karate. That's the exciting bit, right? He paints the whole thing. Well, I feel like that's like that's like the wax on, wax off, isn't it? Wax exactly. on, wax off. It's right. the same thing. Same thing. Hmm. Yeah. It's building a waiting list is the same thing for us. There is a hidden, hidden like like, like agenda. thing behind it, yeah. agenda, mm -hmm. agenda, which is founders that really get it and realize that what they have is the point of a thread that they need to pull from, and that by talking to people, by changing their idea, they can make it more desirable to the point that it's the most desirable it could be. Why it has to be there? Because their product is a manifestation of that idea and the product mm -hmm. is always going to be imperfect. So if you start here, you're going to end up down here. If you start up here, you're going to end up somewhere around here. So you want yeah, to be as desirable it stretches, as possible. It stretches, it stretches you. It stretches you. Yeah. Exactly. We have this founder, the developer. He came to us, he said, like, this free thing built. He's like, I built this thing. Now we need to go and sell it. Great, I say, great. Let's do something. Let's organize five interviews and you use our method, which is like what we call a test wall, which is breaking down your value proposition so that you can get real feedback from it. And it's like, just use the script. Don't say anything more. Don't ask if, don't, if your brother or sister would think when, if the car broke, just use, use the script. And he came back. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so what you're saying is don't, 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 mis, don't manage, manage the interview. Basically just like yeah. stand on its own two exactly. feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, especially like, like, like a landing like, page, like a landing page. Think of it that way. It's like exactly. you're not there to sort of stand next to the landing page. Like, oh no, no that's not what I meant. I meant this other thing here. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, 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 that button, that one. Just keep scrolling. There, there. That's the yeah. One. You, you can't do that, right? Yeah, so it doesn't great. stand its own two feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. So this guy came, comes back. We have this recording somewhere. He comes back, and the first thing he says is, "I'm never going to lay a line of code ever again before doing this interview." <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I thought, I thought he was going to say, I'm never going to lay a line of code again. I was like, oh, no, 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 yeah, I've killed, I've killed, killed the developer, back. right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, so just to be clear, so, so you know that thing about being a business founder and being a technical founder, you usually have these yeah. kind of, they, they, they kind of get together as a, like a pair. So this was a technical founder who, well, who could obviously founder. just code away. Yeah, yeah exactly. And he'd build this thing. And that, that, and um, that, exactly. Yeah. And, he well, said, and, what, and what did he say? He said he, he wasn't going to do another line of code Ever, or he said until no, no. He said I'm never he... laying a line of code without doing these interviews before. And followed by that followed is by I have that. to throw everything that I did away. But don't worry, because last night I stayed late <laughs> and I built something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a guilty pleasure, isn't it? It's like a guilty it pleasure. Is. Quick, put, hide the keyboard. Hide the keyboard. <laughs> It is. Oh, I think I think there, especially as especially as a developer, you know, if you and especially if you're re really competent, you can build a lot. The temptation is you have this idea, and you can translate it into reality, right? So it's like that's an easy path forward to you. It's actually the path of least resistance versus trying to do interviews and, and go through this process of transformation with your idea that we're talking about, which actually for someone who doesn't have that experience would kind of seem a little bit intimidating. 
you know, I remember yes. first doing user interviews, you know, years and years ago. It's scary, and, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I get nervous before every single one. And I was mm. like, I don't know if, what am I going to talk about? Am I going to keep this going for half an <laughs> hour? I'm going like, to cover 20 minutes, list, right? It's like, <laughs> I'm going to cover I I've got a 30 minute schedule with this person. How am I going to cover 30 minutes? Can I just go back to my darkened room with the keyboard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Exactly. It would be like, you know, especially when you're doing like B2B products and you're having to interview like the head of marketing at some company, you're like, man, this is like quite a senior person. I don't even know, you know, I don't want to be like, I'm wasting their time. You know, what am I going to talk about? But, mm. um, you know, that's, that's the beauty of what JB was just talking about in terms of the process that we follow with the user interviews. It's extremely structured. And what we're trying mm. to give to people is, I mean, a template to some extent, but literally this is the point of the questions that you need to be asking. And therefore these are the questions that you need to ask in order to extract information that is going to be useful for you in terms of making a decision about how to continue to iterate your product idea. That mm. say, says it, it, it feels so logical, doesn't it? It feels like, like well, he's no, the machine. He's the yeah, reason yeah, yeah. behind. Can you, can you hear him like go for it? It's like to extract the information that you need to be able to iterate <laughs> your life. And I'm saying about like. Hey, he's, he's definitely, he's, he's definitely, doing. Darren is definitely real. Definitely, <laughs> Darren is definitely real. He's not, he's not one of these AI kind of robots. Yeah, things, just, <laughs> AI robot <laughs> with a beard. <laughs> no, but you know what? This process of transformation is so important and it's so basic and it's so part of the core of what we do that we've managed to like switch around the stats. And what, what do I mean? Why, why do we believe 74 or 90% of startups you know, fail because of the lack of, of marketing? It's because this work of transformation is not done. The, the thread is not pulled from and you eventually build something that nobody wants. Now, mm, yeah. if you look at the founders that we worked with, 74% or 72% is right now. I don't know what's the last, the last, on the last month, Darren. You, you keep me saying on that, but I think it's 72. 72. 72% of the founders that have done this transformation process raise money. Right? Okay. I, I, it's, it's the so, you, so it increases the propensity and the, the confidence and the probability of raise a proper raise. And I'm going to say one, one more thing. None of the people that we work with that secured money did it with the value proposition they came through the door with. <laughs> right. Okay. None. None. Well, so well, my, 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 question, there, my, 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 my question would be, what, what is the yes. percentage change from the original idea to the actual Some of them result? are massive. Some of them are massive. <laughs> some of them are like... Yeah. Well, 100%. 100%. Yeah. So, <laughs> some I would say the only thing remaining the same is the fact that they're in the same industry. You know, it's still <laughs> been... <tech>. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you call an uber, uber pivot or a, yeah, yeah, a, a, a super pivot, it's, you know, a, super, but, a supreme pivot based on, on JP's hat? But that's the key, <laughs> that's the key right? We, you've managed to pivot the company two or three times in mm. the process of three weeks without spending a buck. <laughs> right? You've proven well, why, that those why, 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 So my question would be, why, why, I mean, I, so I, I, really, I really like that approach. It's really, it's really um, refreshing to hear it, to be honest with you, because I think, you know, over the last five, six years, I've talked to a lot of a lot of technical founders, and the there is a there is a, a conversation and a narrative that they seems to use, which is basically, um, you know, I've looked at your background, Andrew, and you look like you've done some interesting things, and you look like you are an investor, and you look like you've also got a very big network. <laughs> and you've probably got some VCs and some private equity firms in that network or some high, high value, you know, high net worth individuals. You know, how, how do I tap into that? And this is potentially on a WhatsApp call or a, or a phone call, a mobile phone call, which you don't even see the face. Um, so, you know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very interesting dialogue. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a pattern that's forming. It's quite concerning yeah. because it's because yeah, yeah. it needs to you need to, so think about how do you you know how do you take that forward because is there a is there a, it sounds like there's a big education needs to happen for people that are doing this process about you know what how do you how do you how do you approach that you know how should you approach yeah, that course. and how do you support how do you support them I, I I was a technical founder originally so I I I know where they're coming from but then I think there was life before VCs there was life before private equity. When people just went and did stuff and built something with, you know, what I would call customer funded. Yeah. Exactly. They went out and, you know, built, built their own balance sheet and customer funded rather than relying on 
external investment. Yeah. So, but there seems to be a, you know. I think, I think, yeah, I, I think there's a couple of things there. One is that um, people see investment as sort of like un unlocking it from zero, but but basically it's about accelerating the momentum that you already have. So the only difference versus, well, not the only difference, but the difference in my mind versus the situation just described is that instead of having to rely on the on the balance sheet that you're building through customer funded, which could take many years, you could acquire capital and make that journey one to two years. But you still have to have the momentum in the first place to work with. But a lot of people don't even have that much. and that's Yeah, because, that. because, you, because then you, so you take external money and then you don't have, you know, say your, your execution or your, your traction, which I know we'll come to in a sec, you know, doesn't yeah. doesn't your sales plan doesn't come to fruition as you want, and your growth plan doesn't come, and then you've got this external stakeholder or stakeholders. You, then how do you manage the expectations with that? Then it gets a bit. It could be, get a bit choppy water. Yeah, it could get a bit yeah. difficult. Yeah. There's this like belief that you know, given that most investments are done through warm introductions, that it, that 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 you can get funding through a warm introduction, right? And it, it's like it's the other way around. It's like the investors fund like companies that are going somewhere that have proof that they're moving and that they're going. Mm -hmm. So what attracts investment is not introductions. This is not an access problem, right? Everybody's talking mm -hmm. about like, can you Great. introduce me to someone? We purposely have access to fund to like to resource. And we purposely say, we don't do introductions. I don't do introductions. I don't know anyone. If you're looking for introduction, I, I believe that you are doing the wrong. You've way. deleted. You've deleted all your LinkedIn network. Yeah, exactly. It, but it's it's so important. There's only one thing that attracts investors, and that's traction. That's you showing that you have the ability to generate equity value. That's it. Doesn't matter how many investors you meet. If you're not creating equity value, if you don't have traction, everybody will tell you the same thing. Andrew, I love what you're doing. It's very interesting. We love the space. Please contact me when you get a little bit more traction. We typically invest with more traction. And it's this like concept of traction that it's up there in the air that nobody wants to like, you know, mm. nobody wants to define. What is traction, guys? What is it? Is it revenue? Is it? We have a very clear definition of what we think is traction for pre-seed. And that's the key thing of it. It's like, you need to put it down. I tell investors, like I tell startup founders, it's like, stop. Imagine the day you get funded. What is true about your startup the day you get funded? Can you tell me that? What is it? You have clients, you have a waiting list, you have a pilot, you've got retention. What's the number? What's your pro market fit score? Can you explain what is true about your startup the day you get funding? Mm -hmm. I don't do it just because, you know, what do you want to have? It's like, what has gone like funding to the other 300 million startups that get funded every day. Do you know what that is? Because if not, you're playing in the dark. This is a dark room and you're hoping, and this is like, this this concept of like, when I meet the right investor, the beliefs in what I do. And it's like, the investors yeah. don't know. Yeah. They, that's why they invest in startup founders because they don't know how to do it. The only thing that they know mm. is they, they, they know what is your track record to creating equity value. If you're a third time founder and you've exited three times, you're going to find it very easy. If you're a first time founder, you're going to find yeah. it very difficult because you have no track record. So what you need to show. So, so what, but what you're is saying is, the, yeah, what you're saying is the investor's looking at the return on, on that investment. Yeah? The, well, yeah. He's looking at the payback. He's looking at the, I invest one and I get X back. It's looking uh, at your ability to create value with that dollar. So yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah, if you're exactly, a third, yeah. like if you've exited three times, that's proven, right? That's, You've got yeah, a track record. Evidence. If not, you need to look at the history since you started the company and say, this guy grabbed his 10 pounds, made it into 300K. If mm. I give him 300K, we're going to go to the moon, right? Mm. That's mm. the concept. You need to show what you create, how much equity value you've created. And I tell founders all the time, it's like, you go and spend 300 pounds on a, on a brand and a logo, and you've created no equity value. You spent money. You go and secure your first 100 clients, you got something. You've created value. You, you're on to a value proposition that people want. But what, so, so gonna... just a quick, quick, quick question though. Why, why do you think, because this is a pattern, I was saying about my pattern of my conversations, you know, over the last few years. Mm -hmm. what, why, 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 apart from obviously people, everybody wants to be a unicorn or a decacorn or whatever. But we'll come back to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
what, what why is that why is it happening like that why what what's what's happened in the education system you know what what what's the what's what's driven people to be like that do you think is it because of the you know the, the people have seen that you know i mean because unfortunately i was in the tech industry before google facebook and all those things yeah. were existed yeah is it is it yeah. looking at those tech titans and saying i can be the next jeff bezos i can be the next Zuckerberg? Is no that, i think it's the way is that, the is industry, that what's happening the is that what's happening problem. No, I think the industry is the problem. The way the way we're all set up. Like, look at look at what like I'm a venture partner and co-founder in a fund, okay? <laughs> and I think the industry is the problem. Like, look at the way the fund behaves. The fund is also looking to separate the weak from the chaff. Look at yeah, it's, like, it's trying to look. It's it's, 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 it's it's I don't know. I mean, you're in inside the fund. It sounds like so. Are you yeah. is, it, is it is the is the rationale or the 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 investment hypothesis that you have a multiple investments and you, you hope that a certain number of those investments can provide a, a significant retain, which covers your other ones that you maybe doesn't work quite work out. Is that, yeah. is that yeah, really the rationale? Also, it's, the rationale is to look at a hundred investment opportunities to pick one, right? If you think about it, um, the concept is the same. The accelerator does the same thing. It separate the wheat from the chaff, right? If you go to an accelerator, the first thing they will tell you is go to market. Andrew, drop everything and go to market. Why? Because they want to know if your idea gets traction or not. They don't tell you. It's like, you need to do an interview, you need to iterate it 10 times. Like, nobody goes to market and gets it done. Nobody's like, I say, Kanye West. That they record one record and then they drop it and everybody loves it, right? There's, there's only one Kanye West in the world, right? So what I'm going at is, like, the whole industry is set up in that way. And I'm part of it. I'm telling you, I'm part of it, right? But... The key of it for, for us and the way we work is you need to transform. Mm. There's no, if not, you're, you're with 75% odd of dying. If you don't transform, there's a good chance that you'll die. I'm not saying, you know, it's the, that, that you cannot do it. You, of course you can, but your chances are not like, the chances are not with you. I think, so, I think... so, 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 so what I was going to say was the one thing that I love about the footer of Darren's emails is <laughs> that it has a link to a very, very interesting video. Yeah. And actually, I, I would actually suggest, after Darren explains what that video is about, which links to your brand, that I want to know when your swag store is coming on board. When your swag <laughs> store. Because I want a hoodie sent to my house. I want a hoodie sent to my house. And a hat, obviously. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, I, I should put my hat on now, shouldn't I? Yeah. We should sell some swag. It's part yeah, of our problem, yeah. this, is my, <laughs> this is my hat for today. Uh, yeah, and you said it's, it, sh it shouldn't be a truck; it should be a motorbike. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so could you could you could you Darren explain for the for the for the audience, the people, the listeners that are listening to this lovely episode today? Because we we've kind of we jumped into the the meat and two veg of the conversation. We didn't really properly yeah. introduce what you're doing and what you what you're working on. But that's fine, that's right? Fine. No, no, that's I, fine. I that's fine. I'm not. I'm not. Compl I'm not complaining. I'm not no, complaining. No, I'm, I'm it's, with it's you, good. We're we, we talk about right. So, Darren, what, what, what's, the, what's lurking at the bottom of your email footer well, that we, I'll that we, this, that we all is, love? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of backstory first, which is that um, I, I literally can remember this day. It was like yeah, probably like six years ago, maybe even maybe even a bit more. But JP and I were both sitting, we were both working in a mobile development agency at the time. Um, Europe's leading, you know, um, that was the same anyway. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a strap line. Yeah, yeah, that was a strap line. Um, it was really, it was, it was good. It was good. Um, but the point was that we were, we were at the, we were at that time. We were both. JP was the consulting director. I was working on his team. We were both um, starting. To, we were kind of really getting into developing our like, how are we going to help these businesses that come to us in a meaningful way? Um, and I'd watched, I think, like the week before this movie uh, with Brad Pitt, starring Brad Pitt called Moneyball. And I remember there was this one scene I was sitting through. I was like, oh, my God, that is exactly what we do. I have to show this, to, show this to JP. <laughs> so the next morning, I was like, he smiled my face. I was like, you got to see this. So I like, I like opened my laptop. I pulled up YouTube. And I got, got the scene. I sat him down. And I just like press play. It's only like two minutes long. And it, it is in the bottom of the email footage, you can say. And I remember looking at him, and he was just like, oh, my God, that is it. I was like, yeah, I know, that is it. Isn't it? So we actually, that, was like the, that was like the light bulb moment, basically. Yeah, yeah. If you can believe it, we actually put it in our presentation. <laughs> put it in our presentation. We pitched to blue chip companies and went against companies like IBM and won 
<laughs> two and a half minute video of Moneyball in the second slide. Really? I, I'm not joking. I would just like stop talking and I would put it on. And people would look at me like, these guys are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, match JP carried it off pretty well. It matches his kind of personality and everything. And I was in the back, just like it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like, like you it. you wouldn't say like this. You wouldn't say like this. You said it was like <laughs> RMD was probably like that. But I was like, that's no, no, good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Keep going. Are you? Are yeah, you? So, about... oh, so when you when, so when you were working in the mobile de- app development agency and you so you use that video in there in yeah, your yeah, pitch. Because, the core of what we thought was wrong in the industry was that there was a lot of people building for the sake of building because they could and because mobile was the future, right? It's like the dot-com right. era where everybody just built. And we were sitting there and thinking, we need to stop this. Like, right. this could have been a business back in the day when it was difficult to find a mobile developer. But now that it's not, we need to separate mm. this business from everyone else by saying we only right. built things that people love. We only built things that are successful. If, if not, uh, we're okay. not building. So, so, it was your, so, it was your enge- so it was your engagement process that was distinct, different, differentiated. Exactly. Well, to, to be clear, what the point of that scene is basically that he's, he's making the point to his entire scout team that you guys are all focused on the wrong thing. You're trying to solve the wrong problem mm. and you're going to fail. And the, the bottom line of what we're trying to say is that you, you need to really ask, like, what is the problem that we're trying to solve here? Mm-hmm. And, and it, it, really it was it's a great lesson, like, like, break it down. And you need to understand it in a way that nobody else. In the, I say, what, like, the one thing a founder brings into the room when they come in, if you are an early stage startup founder, is your understanding of the problem better than anyone else. And you explain it and people say, that's so true. And I've never seen it like this before. We got some founders that walk in, like we had a, a startup that wanted to use artificial intelligence to identify kids that were going to get behind in school and then um, give them content so that they don't get behind. Right. And they do the research to try to understand the problem. And they realize the problem had nothing to do with finding the kids. The teacher knows after week number two, and it can give you the names and surnames of all the kids that are going to get behind the school. And the reason for that is because the kids are not engaged. And the reason why the kids are not engaged is because they don't see school as a way of, like, getting their dreams, like being able to succeed in life. They have a dream. They, they, they see, they see, they see, they yeah, they yeah. see it as obligation. They see it as obligation. It's something that is handed down from mom and dad. Pointless obligation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Handed down from mom and dad. And the best thing that they can do is not fail. That's the problem, right? Mm. This guy comes into the room and says, the problem with school is not the content. It's not the interactiveness. It's not digital. The point with school is to make sure the kids can understand and articulate that school is there to help them fulfill their dreams. We need to develop kids' dreams, and then we need to put school in the context of doing that. You want to be a rally Mm. car driver? That's great. Let me show you this video yeah, the path, of Schumacher. The path, the, the path of to that. that exactly. Goal, Let me that, show you this video dream. of Schumacher going around the corner on a carton, on a go-kart, and leaning the wrong way. Everybody's leaning right on a left turn. He's leaning left. Why? Because he knows that if he leans left, there's more pressure on the inside tire, and he can take the corner faster. To mm. do that, you need to understand physics, and you need to understand math. This kid is not just good at driving. He's mm. applying himself to be the number one driver in the planet. You want to be a really car driver, you need to learn math. But math is a path to your future. That's the kind of transformation that we're talking about. But the mm. key thing is, when this guy walks into the room, everybody looks at it and says, he's so right, but nobody's seen it before and nobody's doing anything about it. So instead of using artificial intelligence to identify what kids are doing, he built this application that helps kids figure out what their dream is. And it right. feeds them context to showcase that school can help them achieve their dreams. It doesn't use artificial intelligence. It doesn't give in that you way. super... In that way. Um, yeah. It doesn't give you super content so that you can learn math better. It just allows mm. you, allows the kid to understand that school is the priority. That's it. 
And you know how but you see, that? But, that, but, that, but that's a bit like that's a bit. It's a bit like it's mod. It's changing the story. Yeah, it's yeah, it's evolving totally. the story to be more relevant and more succinct. And yeah, more, and more, and more real elephant, and more real. Right? There's a pink elephant yeah. there, and nobody's looking at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But just to be clear, in that in yeah, that and challenge case, challenge some of the assumptions as well. I suppose. Yeah. In yeah. that case, it's it's looking at a completely different problem, right? That's what Brad Pitt is doing. He's like, guys, this is not the problem. That's not the problem. That's not the problem. This is the problem. But also, there is a more deep point about the movie, which is a bit more advanced for anyone who knows about jobs to be done, which is that the way he builds his team is by identifying players that are undervalued and buying them at a massive discount, right? Yes. Because he's looking at only one statistic, which is like on base percentage, right? He just wants to know how many of the how often they get on base. No one mm. else is even looking at that because they don't. No one even knows that that is the key for winning games, right? So, mm-hmm. in our case... So, he kind of root causes it, basically. What's, he does do the, that. Yeah. But in a, yeah. in a deeper way, he's also looking... Like, when you do jobs to be done, right? You're looking at um, the process that people follow to get a job done. And you're looking mm-hmm. at all the different points in that process where they struggle for some reason. Why, Why that, that it becomes difficult. Or yeah. It's time-consuming, right? Yeah. Um, and then you focus on those because those are underserved by the market right now. Mm-hmm. Meaning mm-hmm. that there are not solutions in the market that help you get that aspect of the job done well. And what we're saying is that there are also, in the same way that there are undervalued players that you can build a team with, there are undervalued needs, which other products are not focused on, which if you were to focus on them, you could build a product that would differentiate you in the market and perform better than your competitors. That is the point. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, what I, so, I see, so what I see, so what you're doing is you, you, you're making the product design real by exactly. making and saying, okay, what is exactly. the actual tangible, measurable impact they can have when you land that product but in the in the target you, organization? You need to be able to articulate mechanically what the problem is. You know how many yes. slides I get about the problem? The problem with plastic, right? I mean, they, they, they talk about the tons of plastic that pollute the world, and it's like, what is the problem? We've done that research. You know what the problem is? People think that recyclable things are trash. They treat them as trash. The right. problem is that people treat that as trash. The problem is not the amount of plastic. The problem is that we all treat it as trash. Mm. Right? And there's not, the enough places to, there's not enough places to, to take that trash. So it then starts to affect the planet. So being able to understand and articulate the mechanical problem that is burdening your customer base is the mother of being able to come up with a solution. Most of us come up with a solution before we understand that. And that's the key of the video. Yeah, we, guys which is what, there saying, which is what, you guys are looking yeah. at the wrong problem. You don't get the problem. You're never going to get to good ports because mm. you're fumbling with a problem that is not there. Mm. That's why 75% of startups fail for the lack of market need because they did not understand the problem. If they mm-hmm. did, they would have created something that people would desire. So it's, basi- so, so it's basically it's problem insight, isn't it? It's business problem insight. That's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put yeah. it. Problem insight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it all starts. With or problem really insight. understanding your customers. I mean, we, we used to have a phrase at Tesco called. Andrew, un- yeah, it's the oh. less sexy thing that you can talk to a founder about. If like, mm-hmm. if I want to make money, I would never be doing this. Like mm-hmm. you want you want to talk sexy to a, to a founder, you tell them you're going to introduce them to investors. They have a great network. <laughs> and it's like, Prototyping. You know, you're gonna, yeah. yeah, we're going to do a prototype, and then you know they're going to love it. It's going to look great. Your brand is going to look. It's going to pop. And we're going to use all these great colors. <laughs> we'll charge you all this money to do this. Like great, and it, it'll be wonderful, right? It, the less sexy thing that I could tell the founder is you need to go and talk to your to your target audience. And you need to figure out what the problem is. It's the last thing they want to hear. It's honestly the last thing they want to hear. And do, do you, do you, do you, so, so I was just going to say, at Tesco, we used to have this phrase like, know your customers better than anyone. Which mm. is, I suppose it's very similar to what you're doing mm. there. You, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. get yeah. deep into your customers, what are the problems they've got, and then work out is there a product or service that can meet that That's need. exactly it. That's okay. exactly yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, and, so, and the size of Tesco reflects that, right? I mean, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. Um, but the, the thing I was just going to say was that what you're, but what you're saying is that that, that implies to me that. It, so, a quick question would be, I suppose, about how, do you see a difference between a business and a technical founder when you when you when you have this narrative, you have that initial conversation, yeah. and you challenge them? Do you find that the, their response or their level of understanding is different, or the way they tackle it is different, or is it or is it consistently? 
is it consistently a problem of a founder or co-founder that they don't they just don't know the the, the main the, the main problem in my perspective is just how it manifests after that they both feel that they have it, it, the majority of people that we speak speak to um and maybe not the person listening to this right now but feels that they have the answer right and the way it manifests with the technical founder is that because they can build it they go and build it but then no one uses it the way it manifests with the business business side founder is that they're panicking because they have no way to build it and they're going and asking everyone they know and their sister hey right. can you build this thing for me rather mm. than doing what we're talking about which is getting evidence of interest with a waiting list so mm. in both cases the problem the root problem is the same they just manifest in a different way because they don't have a different skill set right mm. business, business founder is blocked because they can't build and the technical founder is not blocked so they build but no one uses it so <laughs> and it's 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 rooted build it and they will come of, build it and they will come knowing, yeah exactly building and they will come we had a slide of that we did have that slide. video <laughs> the, Ke the kevin costner post we had like there. four <laughs> different scenes of four different movies to paint the point yeah. and there was <laughs> this like scene of kevin costner and the just the soft voice going build it and they will come <laughs> <laughs> that would stop the video I would say I wish we'd that is been not able true. To pitch to you back in the day, Andrew. Yeah, you would. You would have, yeah. That's hilarious. It's, oh, this it's, is in your mobile. Oh, right, okay. This yeah, is in your yeah, mobile. Yeah. So you yeah. see, you still. This is the thing: is we're now, you know, in well into this episode, and you haven't actually. It's quite funny. This is, you haven't actually told the audience what your business is called. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously, for all those money ball Brad Pitt yeah. fan people. Yeah, they will know the answer to that question already. You see, because well, no, 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 no. at the end of the scene, uh, when Brad Pitt has given his whole speech and he's explained everything that's wrong with the world, you know, so to speak, there's this one guy who just was lost about two minutes ago into the speech, and he just kind of pipes up and goes, "Who's Fabio?" And he's just like, oh. <laughs> he starts the speech. It's, it's quite cool because he starts the speech and goes like, "You're all sitting there." As if you're looking for Fabio, trying to make a point and moving on, right? Like, and then he goes and goes like, it, it takes him about three minutes. And I know it's three minutes because I played this in front of a room of 12 people <laughs> and I'm counting <laughs> seconds there thinking, fuck me. Um, are, are you going to bomb? Are you going to bomb? Yes, gonna, exactly, you, exactly. And then right at the end of it, someone goes, excuse me, who's Fabio? They go caught <laughs> in the first three seconds of this Two and a half speech, two and a half minute speech of this guy explaining what's wrong with the world in, in, in his world, right? In his mm. industry. Mm. And, and that's what the way, like, we, we see it, right? You get, you got caught at the beginning. There's so much transformation to be done. There's so much that you need to understand mm. about the problem and change. To be it's, able to it's, succeed. it's kind of getting intimate with the problem, isn't it? It's like walking it in the corridors and walking in the shoes of the of the target it customer, is. and yeah. really understanding that from a qual and quant point of view. Is, uh, that, is, that, the, is that fair? That's that's exactly right. And the key is that, you mm. know, as far as like we're concerned, um, you know, we look for many many different tools and frameworks that would help us to do that, right? Mm. And there's a lot out there that are not very effective at all. Um, but when we finally got <laughs> to this particular flavor of jobs to be done that we follow which is which is which is originally quite quantitative we simplified and distilled it um to the point where it does give you very concrete and specific insight into what the problem actually is from the standpoint of the customer's experience trying to get the job done which is all that this is so about so cool, yeah. It yeah, but so it, it, no but a quick question is is this i mean obviously there's this that alex Afterwald, the business model canvas yeah yeah, that, exactly. there's 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 a, there's a there's an there's an addition of that, isn't there, down that route with the jobs to be done in that in that context? Is that right? Or not? Yeah, I can't remember. What he, I, I'm familiar with Prismal Canvas. I can't remember what he did with jobs to be done, but there are many flavors of jobs to be done. Most of mm. which we think are very vague. And um, uh, I mean, the people who've come up with them have applied them very well and successfully in their own way, I suppose. But for us, it just isn't. It's not specific enough in terms of the actual functional problem that needs to be solved by a, pro a technical product. Which is right. most, in most cases, what we're dealing with, right? It's one thing if you're like, you know, if you're like a, a realty company, you're trying to come up with a mattress, or if you're like, you know, some other problem that's not solved functionally by software doing a job. Mm -hmm. In our case, because we're dealing with tech founders and tech products, this just seems to work much, much better. That's, okay, that's so, so, yeah. so in terms of your, your kind of ideal customer or your niche, it is software founders. Tech founders, and it's, yeah, and building it's, software. Tech founders, right, yeah, okay. but like, okay. look, we've, we've built like fintech products and the core features are, you know, it's a loan. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's deployed mm, yeah, through it's digital, deployed. but, you know, it's a yeah. technical, it's a technical implementation of, of the thing, but 
the features are from the loan. It's like oh. the, def the definition of how liquid the loan is or, you know, how it's repaid or how it's charged is mm. all about that. When you talked about the canvas, we don't use the canvas because we feel that it doesn't constrain the user enough to design something good. We use something called the forfeit um, framework in which we just not only work on the product, we work on the market, what market segment, and we work on the channel, how you're going to sell mm. it, and we work yeah. on the model. How are you going to, yeah. you know, what are you going to charge? How are you going to charge? Like some, well, some well, I mean, what, what I would call it, why I would yeah. call the business model canvas, it's a bit like a context in, you know, in, in system design, mm. if I herald back to my days of doing that, then it's more like the context diagram. Yeah. It's like, a, yeah. it's like a high level view of, the, of your but, the macro level view. But, you know, to your point, to, to your point, you've got to get down to brass tacks. This is what well, you're, you're calling out and saying, get down to brass tacks of what really, really is under, under the skin of that. Is that right? Yeah. But there's That's more to that. Yeah, there's more. there's more to that. And there's more. And there's more. Yeah. Like when <laughs> and that's something completely the different. Model, <laughs> no, it's the same. Yeah. no, but when you use the forfeit model, you have relationships between those four things that need to be true for this to work. Like, I'm an engineer, right? I've learned this. Like, Excel is great, right? It helps you do all these calculations, but it also allows you to create a universe that doesn't exist. I once designed the axle of, a, of an engine that was four meters wide. And the, the professor looked at me and it's like, JP, the calculations are right. This exercise was a trick. You can't, <laughs> it, it can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's bigger than the boat. Okay. <laughs> this axle is bigger than the boat. You understand that? We find, and maybe it's because we don't apply it right or because we just are not masters in that particular tool, is that we, that, that tool doesn't allow us to do that. The forfeit model, it sinks the boat. You put the things in the wrong place and it, you see the oh, boat sink. Okay. And it's like, yeah. okay, this startup doesn't, doesn't succeed. So you literally, if the relationships don't work between your market, your product, your channel, and it, your model, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks the startup. Yeah, so okay. it allows you to say, that startup doesn't work. Let's you go should, you should do this. Do you do this as a game? You've got a game. It sounds like, it sounds like, you know, you should be applying to a you know, you're like, Has, you should, I know what you should do. We should ring the CEO of Hasbro. We've just got a new, <laughs> yeah. we've got, we got the the startup forfeit game, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then you and then you connect them to electricity. You, you connect them to electricity, so they get, you know, they get like a buzz when they when they have a forfeit, you know. Maybe you could be that? an advisor, Andrew. Or maybe you have some network people in your network. You could open the door. Yeah, to can us you introduce any investors? <laughs> oh, I've got an idea. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just going to go straight. I'm just going to come off this episode and go straight on the call. Yeah, I need. We need to. We need to have a you know a WhatsApp group set up. Yeah, I know we've never met you or anything, but yeah, would you mind like? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll think about you when we're on that on that that beach and the island in the sun with that. Pina Colada. To which we haven't invited you to, sorry. <laughs> exactly, yeah, sorry. Did you, did you not get the, you not get the invite by carrier pigeon? <laughs> exactly. But so, so, know, so, I mean, so, sorry, sorry, go, sorry, go, what are you going to say? No, no, yeah. take, it, take it where you want to go. No, I was just going to say, I was, so in terms of, you know, so you, your business is called Hughes Fabio, yeah? Is that right? Is that, is that, Correct. Hughes Fabio. The question mark, exactly, yeah, exactly. because think, we don't know exactly, who it is. I remember the first, time I the, the first time I spoke to JP, and he's probably too young to remember this, because I think, I think he, he can remember. There was a guy that is, is like, a, I think it was an Italian model called Fabio. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. With long, yeah, long yeah. hair. Yeah. Yeah. See, he, he's waiting for that call. Yeah, because he wants to be on your brand. He wants to brand. be him. I thought you were going to come on with the blonde, the blonde wig today. You see, it's like, you know. <laughs> Isn't that, I can't believe it's not butter. Isn't that that, that guy or is that something else? Isn't that that well, that's a special TV station you're watching, Darren. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, but so, so I mean, so, so your mission, I suppose, what you're saying is your mission is to help software founders um, to get this, to crack this problem. Yeah. yeah. Or, the way or edu 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 educating to crack this problem, I suppose. Is that right? Yeah, well, or? we believe in a different way of starting up. And we believe that not 75% of the startups need to fail because of lack of market need. We believe that any idea is good if you pull from it, right? If you pull mm -hmm. from it, if you listen, if you understand the problem and come up with something better, it's just a stepping stone. We don't believe in, you know, what's that movie, Tucker, that the guy creates the hula hoop and just like that's a, like a thing or, or is like, like the, the um, Back to the Future, right? That Emmett Brown hits himself with the sink and it's like, oh, the, the, I don't know what Transformer. It's like, that doesn't exist.
it's all a myth, and it's great for Disney. You know, you know, you know, you know what? You know, you know what? You've triggered me now. You see, well, you, you've been such a movie buff, JP. You know, you know what you should do. Go for you know what you should. What? You know what you should do. You know, I've just, I've just thought about this. Place. You know, you know the Silicon Valley, the series over in, 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 oh, yeah. in yeah. We should, we should create a series called Silicon Roundabout because it's not yeah. far from where <laughs> you guys live, right? <laughs> That's it. You know, oh, we, you know, you know, it's like it, it's the evolution from Magic Roundabout. You know, with Dougal and, and all those different characters, yeah. Yeah, that's there's you know, so we just, much we, myth. We just there. co-created on this episode the, ne- the <laughs> next the next blockbuster. You, you keep opening your investor Rolodex for us. <laughs> <laughs> the boom. Yeah. So yeah, that's what. No, we're but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, you know, the, the thing is, the logical extension of your business is to make the movie. Yeah. You've, yeah. you've written the book. You've written the book. So you, what you should say? What? So you wrote, you've written a book, guys, haven't you? you, you yeah. We yeah, obviously that's people. Right. Which people, well, when we publish this episode, obviously we'll, we'll share the link for it because I've read the book and it's very, very good actually. It's very, it's not that long actually, but it's very to the point. There's no mucking, there's no mucking no no about. Fluff. I was, I was able to it's successfully edit JP. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> there is absolutely no fluff in it because uh, I particularly am dyslexic and I find books very long winded. Very long-winded. I find any article long-winded. It's like, what's the point? <laughs> like, right? Give me the point that you're trying to make. Um, yeah, but you um, see, what I find with your articles, you put you put pictures of movies in or pictures yeah. of cartoons in. Like, yeah. I've seen this one about eating the strategy or something. I think you had The Simpsons in it the other day, didn't you? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It was Bart playing <laughs> when he plays, like, um, eight different people at the same time and he loses checkmate to all of them in the second move. And it's like, <laughs> this kid's playing to eight kids at the same time. And it's like, checkmate, 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 checkmate. It's like, yeah, everybody can play it. <laughs> the question is, can they win? <laughs> the question is, can they win? So, so I mean, that's so th- that kind of part of the, of the episode has been <laughs> very interactive. I mean, in, in terms of, uh, you know, what we want to do is dig a little bit into your backgrounds um, and what we talk about in, in your background. Because it sounds like, before we jump in that, you've actually got, you've got real names and you've actually got other names, haven't you? So you've got... Superhero so, names. That's right. Superhero so, names. So, oh, superhero names. Okay. <laughs> so do you, want to, do you want to explain to the audience what your real name is and then what your superhero name is then? And why, why is that? Well, I can tell you what the superhero names are and you can kind of guess who you think is who. But basically, it's reason and passion. Probably obvious by now which which one applies to which person, um, not least because of JP's earlier accusations. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't even remember how we came up with them or when we came up with them. I don't know. Maybe you remember JP. It, it just it was like, when we came up with Uspa, like when we gave birth yeah, to Fabio and we had to come, come up with handles for for the emails. And it's like we just oh, gonna yeah, do it like email this. address. I'm not gonna put my name yeah. on my email. JP at Fabio. Like that's so. It's like boring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like who wants to What are we? I did manage right? to convince I mean I did manage to convince JP that his email couldn't be the future at his <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to do that. But I presume you're I presume you're playing on the left brain, right brain context well, that, that. that, that, that... Par- that's what our partnership is about, really, to some yeah. extent. I mean, um I think that's why JP and I complicate complement each other so well. I mean, I know there are obviously various times where I drive him up the wall and he drives me up the wall, but it, you know, that's just part of the, the complementarity of the, you know, the harmony that we create, which is that, you know, um, what I, what I feel I bring to the table, there's a certain level of, of like logic and reason and working through things and getting right down to the, the nitty gritty details, which especially when you work in jobs to be done and, and problems and stuff like that, yeah, you really need it. Work. Yeah. yeah you, do. You, need, you need the discipline there, don't you? Yeah. However, 100%. I always find myself going you know jb you know jb will come into the conversation i always find myself going damn why didn't i think of that damn i didn't see that <laughs> damn i can't believe he, yeah that is exactly right that is what as long as it's is. in private it's, it's fine as long as it's in private <laughs> not when you're doing a pitch it's a bit more difficult yeah, you know but, it's a bit later, but I'm like, actually even when we're doing presentations sometimes he'll, he'll like say something off the cuff i'm like oh my god that is it that is what it's all about that is the main point here you know, because like I find that I always get stuck in the details, just trying to get something done, whatever, and then you sort of like miss the big picture, right? You miss what this is all about. You miss like the real strategic point. And um, not only does the JP have that, but he's also, I mean, he's enthusiastically passionate, and you can see that kind of something <laughs> in, this, in this episode. <laughs> um, you know, he's the shy, the shy one in the corner, exactly. Yeah, right. yeah, he's the shy one in the corner. Yeah, so that's that's how it kind of came about. So it's kind of a good good partnership in that way, and um, you know. <laughs> 
Because I, I suppose, you, you know, I suppose this is the thing is you've got to have that because you, you've kind of effectively created a startup for startups, haven't you? Is that is that it, the best it way? Is, it is like yeah. That. It is like and, that. you know, having that having that bond at your, at your level as the co-founders is incredibly important. Having that 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 um, je ne sais quoi. Yeah. And yeah. also, like, we designed the business <clears throat> to be able to, like, work on a daily basis with startup founders. Like when we had an agency and we had like 40 developers, you can't work with a startup founder. You drown them on 20 seconds flat with all that they can't afford, right? Mm. This company mm. is designed so that we can't do that. Don't get me wrong. We also work with large banks when they want to build a new like loan and they reach out to us and it's like, can you design me a loan for like this kind of segment? We do. Mm. Um, mm. But the, the DNA of the business the four fits of the business is structured in a way that allows us to work with startup founders, mm. right? We can't, we can't have developers and designers in our rotor because if not, I will be trying to flog developers and designers to a group of people that can't afford it, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, so what you're saying is you, you, don't, you, don't want to be create, you don't want to create an agency model. It's mm, not really no. an agency you create. No, you cre especially you create you look at the problem, especially right? The problem. the problem is not finding a developer or a shit hot designer. The problem mm. is really understanding what's the problem that you're trying to solve and coming up with a solution that people want to buy. Mm. That's it. That's it. But it's, but it's quite, I mean, I suppose maybe this is the thing also, this is why we're going back to education, is the there's a piece around, and this is, I know you do stuff on this as well, is, is, is it, it really highlights, you know, you talk about the school analogy and the university and, and, and you know, you do your master's degree, then you do your PhD, whatever, but you actually don't, you know, learning about this problem at a real pragmatic, practical level, mm -hmm. it says that all these people are graduating, yeah? Mm -hmm. And this, they're then, you know, the, the, they see, oh, the tech industry is very magnetic, very sexy. I'd like to emulate. I'd like to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And then the, the, the barriers to entry are very low, yeah? yeah? But then they kind of stumble or they, they don't really know what to do. So I suppose what you're doing is helping. You're providing that bridge to help them on that first chapter to get going, which I think, yeah. and maybe they have, do you find that they've had, they've kind of been out in the wilderness a bit before they come find who's Fabio or, 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 or maybe, maybe because your Instagram ads are obviously just piling in there, you know, like, please let, let me in the door. Let me in the door. Oh, sorry. We're full. We're full. We're full. No room in the inn. <laughs> we, we, we don't even call it lo like we call it lost in the desert, the startup desert. There's so much content. There's so much stuff to consume. There's so many tools and so many books to read. And so many, yeah. like, we've read a lot of them, right? Mm. And there's so many founders lost in the desert. And the reason why we call it lost in the desert is because they walk around in circles. And it happened to mm. me that three months go by and you sit down and it's, why are we asking ourselves the same question we've answered three months ago? What? I thought we had the answer to this one. Mm -hmm. And it's because you've gone in circles. It's because you've not used a method like the four fits that allows you to see that the thing is sinking. So you move ahead with something that eventually you come all like all the way around. And it's like, oh, it's so you don't get, work. you don't get. So what you're doing is you, you're moving forward because you think moving forward is progress rather than actually doing the, the actual proper work each stage. Is that, is that yeah. what you're finding as well? Yeah. And the, the way people also articulate progress in, in, in this space is just like, I've had like presentations of founders that articulate traction as they've been accepted to this accelerator or they won this prize from this bank that does this thing. And it's like, no, the only progress, the only traction that you can get is from your customers saying yes. And you being able to show that what you're building has merit. Mm. Mm. Like there is no validation in a group of people that are not your target audience saying that they like your startup there's no validation in getting funding because even funded companies fail there mm. is no even if it's like we got three million of funding that's Wait, become, great. But, well i mean if, if, they get fund, if, if they get funded then it becomes even more amplified and it potentially impacts more people doesn't it? because they've probably hired a lot of people and they're probably having to manage the stakeholder the you know, shareholders as well it becomes a lot more difficult complex yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I just want to bring it back to one other thing, which you know, it, you, you open this episode talking about that, that ad you had seen, right, on Instagram or whatever, which was mm -hmm. JP, 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 JP
the point of that. This is like his own his own little movie, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I directed. I'll take credit. I directed. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the point of that is to get people for a moment just to put a different hat on, not the startup hat on, but the investor hat on. All right. Yeah. Forget your startup yeah. founder for a moment. Imagine that you're a startup investor for a moment, and you've got 150 k. Right. Let's walk through these two startups, A and B, and let's consider which one of these you would actually consider to be a, a more compelling investment. Mm-hmm. Right. And just think through the process so that when you when you're back in your startup hat again, you can think, oh, yeah, OK, now I understand what I need to do to actually appeal to an investor and allay their concerns or mitigate the risk that they would, you know, that's, that would be holding them back from saying, yeah, this would be a good investment. Because a lot of there's like the cause and effect has sort of been lost. I don't know like where it's gone. Totally, but it's yeah. you know what? Yes, yeah, see, see, through, it, see like, through that, see through their eyes, basically. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's like you know what are they buying? Have you thought about what they're buying? This this concept we get lost in the desert. You know, successful startups have a shit hot name. Let's get a shit hot name. Successful startups had a shit hard website. Let's get a shit hard website. All, all the dot coms like, have gone. Let's go to dot io. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, no, no. You need to try to understand what is this person looking for, right? They've got this capital, and their job is to deploy the capital to generate equity value. They want to generate value. Mm. So what you need to show is your ability to deploy capital and generate equity value. How do you do that? If you have a history of starting up and you've done exits, you talk about that. If you don't, if you're a first-time founder, you need to talk about the time since you started the company till now. And you need to show them that you've created equity value. But you need to communicate to them very clear that you're not here to start. You're not here to create your startup. You're not here to pet your product. You're here to create equity value for them. That's it. Most startup founders that I meet as a venture partner for early-stage startup in Latin America fail to communicate to me that they are here to generate equity value. Right. It's massive. What, 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 what do they say then? What do they say they're doing then? They're they talk about the startup. They talk about what they're trying to build. They talk about their vision. They, don't they get me talk wrong, about some the of technologies they're going to use. Sorry? Some of them I backed. I'm not saying that. But right. It, as a venture partner, I see a founder walking into the room and in the first five minutes, they understand my business, and they understand what I'm here to do. We get along. I, you know, immediately they communicate. Let me show you how I created equity value since we started. I got three thousand people on the waiting list. I created a pilot with fifty of them. They're doing great. You know, they wanna, they wanna, they wanna pay and stay, stay for for the next six months. Okay. That's where the conversation finishes, and I go around and go to the to the GP and say, I think we should back this guy. <laughs> and, and right. I, because I want to he gets the game. game exactly i want to make one point like it, it, however many years ago when it was like you know you had to be customer funded that was very very obvious that you had to do that right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but now it's somehow it's not, it's it's, not as obvious yeah somehow it's not as obvious anymore yeah, yeah. because because i think the because i think well a lot of the founders that are now entering that space don't know a, a world without the vc you know, if you look at exactly. the you look at the stats since 2013, when Aileen Lee did the famous unicorn explanation, yeah, the number of VCs and pri- you know and private, you know, the, the the amount of money that's been pushed invested into technology, it's I don't know I don't know what the number is. It's 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 got so many notes on it. Yeah, exactly. um, but um, that that's the thing is even if you look at the number of venture funds that have been created since 2013, it's it's in the last 10 years, it's it's astronomical. Um, the number of unicorns, there's a unicorn tracker. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I need to look at that. Um, I think there's about nine hundred. Is it nine hundred unicorns? I mean, it's over a thousand now. But I it's, think it's, it's over just, a thousand. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's it's. I suppose the question for me would be, is, you know, is, is but the, the the trend there is grow, grow and build a unicorn, build build a build a sizable business at any cost, fund it through, through you know third party investment. Yeah. I external investment. Third party investment and, just, and, it's, 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 and it's just, just speed. some kind of you need yeah, to yeah, be but... going somewhere, right? People don't invest in ideas. They invest either in founders. When they say no, I invested in idea stage, they invest in a founder. They don't invest in an idea. And you you precede. You need to show traction. You need to show that you're moving somewhere. You need to show that you can create equity value. That's the bottom line. 
there's this so much this like concept of if you meet the right investor, they will back you because they believe in what you're saying is true. And it's like mm. it's not about what you're saying is true. It's about your capability to execute, and your capability to execute has to do with the things that you've done in the past. That's it. Yeah, That's yeah. It. And I, th- I, th- I, think I think the point here the point is also is that we're not saying that you need to be profitable. We're saying that there needs to be evidence of interest and real traction. Mm-hmm. That is what we're talking about. There mm-hmm. needs to be, you need, you need to have momentum as a business, you know, because yeah. some of these, like even these unicorns, some of them are not profitable yet and won't be for years, but that's just the nature mm-hmm. of the business they're in and the kind of market, what you have to do to dominate and stuff. We're not we're saying, saying that the issue is profitability. We're saying that the issue is that you have no evidence that anyone wants this. You have mm. no evidence that you've been able to build a product that yeah, is, people adopt and, and is there a market and, need? Is there a market exactly. need? Yeah. 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 Think about like about your challenge, challenge as a as a very early stage founder. What is it? What do you actually need yeah. to prove? Like JP said, what needs to be true that day when you walk out of the room and you you've shaken hands with an investor who's gonna make that investment? Yeah. Andrew, people by are the not way, really not thinking about it from the investment standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, behind that first challenge, which is making sure that people really want this, there's eight of them that we look at right after that. It's not just that one. But if I go through them all right now, you'll be overwhelmed, right? But there's a lot no, of challenges about no, designing a product. Give, that is give me that. Give, give me that tidal wave. I love it. <laughs> well, the second one is, you know, the second one is okay. You've designed something that people say they like, right? Is your product the concept of your product? How is deployed? good enough to retain people because that's the other reason why right. people fail well that's like, that's the, that's the leaky are they coming that's the leaky bucket scenario isn't it <laughs> exactly exactly so i i use the analogy of, of of a bakery right and you say okay i've i've got this concept of the bakery it's going to be the best what was the cake that we picked darren um red velvet right? velvet red velvet yeah. red velvet yeah. what's the we're going to do this this bakery that's the best red velvet in in london great I created a waiting list. That means that people like red velvet. It doesn't mean that they like your red velvet. It means that they they, <laughs> they want red velvet, right? Then you need to bake mm. the red velvet and you need to sell it and you need to track how many people come back to buy that red yes. velvet again. Not the bought the first time. Yeah. But they come from, back. You. from you. From you. Yeah. So that's the second challenge, which is the pilot, is this concept of you know, have some kind of indication of retention. Because if you have a leaky bucket, mm. your forfeits are never going to work. So the first thing is let's have spend all the money on acquisition, want. and then within one year they're all gone. <laughs> exactly. yeah. So the first concept is you have something that people want, and then you prove mm. that your product concept has merit to secure to um, to retain people. That you are mm. you are trending towards product market fit, and you can track product market fit, and you can mathematically show what your product market fit score is. This is not. An obscure concept called product market fit. This is yeah, a very it's, it's, clear. It's, 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 what, you, what, what you're raising is adoption and stickiness. Correct. Exactly. Adoption. Yeah. And what is adoption? The way I describe adoption is something rather very mean, simple. Collecting, rather than collecting dust on the shelf. Yeah. So <laughs> <Exactly. to speak. laughs> if I, you know how I communicate adoption? <laughs> I asked Darren, Darren, where do you buy red velvet? Oh, uh, it's that place down on uh, Flavor Town on Fulham Road. That's adoption. If they use your name after the word red velvet, that means that that person buys red velvet from you and communicates you as a solution for red velvet, right? So for us, the first challenge is, is your concept able to attract people? Is this something people really struggle with and really resonates with that target audience? The second one is, is your product concept? Because there's 8 million ways of solving a problem, right? Mm. What is it? There's a hundred ways to skin a cat. Right, it's like you can you can come up with any kind of solution that you want. Cats have got nine lives. Problem. Yeah, there's, there's lots of there's <laughs> lots of stats we can come out that I'm sure that, that Darren would would have, would have either underpin or not. So the second one is you know, can you even retain people? And then the third one. Well, it would go to retain people, or can you can you have a repeat purchase? That's what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And the third one would be for us is like you've got a long, long track ahead of you. What's your plan? And it's not about a financial plan that shows that in year five, we're making a lot of money. I'm talking about how you're not going to bleed to death. I'm talking about you can't build Rome overnight. It's not possible. You're not Mm -hmm. Kanye West. You cannot get 12 hits one after the other. 
you have to chop up your challenges and you need to take them one at a time. And each challenge, mm -hmm. the challenge that you achieve enables you to move the company into a different position. Your company will morph into three or four different types of companies until it gets to where it's going. You cannot build company eight from scratch. You need to morph into the different things to prove investors that you're not going to bleed to death, that you don't need Oh, you mean, so what you're saying is, is, is how, how, how do you create a sustainable business model that actually can grow and grow profitably over time? Yeah. And then switch the and find, find the next stage of the company. For us, it's very important that you're not trying to build the hey, ultimate we're, we're, thing we're, from we're, one we're, goal. We're going we're we're to be drawing out a, a, a very favorite chart that I used to use called the Ansoft Matrix next. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> I haven't heard about Tell that. Us more about that. <laughs> Tell us more about that. Well, you know, it's like new, it's like the kind of, you know, existing products, all new, new products, existing markets, new markets. It's this it's kind of growth matrix. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. I see. It's, you know, it's okay. one of those, the ones. Yeah. That, we do it in you know, a similar way. You usually see on PowerPoint decks. <laughs> yeah. It's like built into the template or something, isn't it? It's paying by you know numbers. What? Yeah. The, the example I love, and it's, it's very controversial right now because he's not very loved by but I'm going to actually bring out a up. game. I'm going to, JP, I'm, JP, yeah. I'm going to bring out a game. It's going to be called the Ansoft game, you see. <laughs> the next thing, actually, we're not going to get Hasbro. We're going to get Hasbro on the next episode, right? And then we're going to bring you guys back on. <laughs> and we're going to do this no, but... grand reveal with the, for the forfeit game and the Ansoft game. Yeah. Sorry, this metamorphosis thing is so real for me um, that you can see it in the wild. And I'm going to use like a example that takes it all the way to the end, which is like Tesla's secret master plan. You read Tesla's secret master plan, and he is literally articulating how he's going to change the company from a company that initially builds a very fast roaster, electric fast roaster, to you know a company that takes over an industry. And you think about it, and it's like, wait, the ultimate objective of this guy is to accelerate the adoption of this completely new energy ecosystem and economy. And he's starting with what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A roadster that goes really fast and faster than a Porsche? That doesn't make sense. They should start with batteries or they should start with like solar panels. And it's like, no, no, let me explain. There's like, there's like 28 chess moves that gets me there before I bleed to death. Yeah, 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 it's, it, it, yeah exactly. And well, he's, the well, reason that well, he's, so he's, he's, he's so going valuable, for, he went, he, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Mm. No, no, he's, he's created that high value. He's, he's, he made a splash by creating the high value proposition. And then he's, he's building out a portfolio. Isn't he? He's building like a whole, um, I don't know what you call it. It's like a new, a new world. It is a new, economy. a new world. Totally. And it like, you know, the, the, the logic behind the, the game, it's like, no, we're going to start with, you know, building a technology for a small group of people, but we're going to use that as R and D and we're going to create a battery technology. And we are also going to prove that there is no compromise in electric, right? They put head to head a Porsche with a roaster. There is no compromise. These are not the Honda from the eighties that have bicycle wheels and could like, you know, no, 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 there is absolutely no compromise in electric. That's the first thing that he's like, my first challenge is to communicate to the consumer world that there is no compromise in electric. So we're going to build the fastest electric car that's going to rival Ferrari and Porsche. When we do that, we've created something. You know, we, we, we started to pull from this. You module, painted, the, we you can painted start the future. Exactly. Yeah. Because the network wasn't there, because the charging wasn't there. There's a lot of things that need to be built. Yeah, right? yeah. If yeah. he wants to build all of that in one go, he'll bleed to death. So he looked at it, and you read the thing, and it's like, this is great. And the Wait, reason but, why but the what, company's worth so did, much what, is but because what, but what he did. nailed it, right? Each time yeah, what, he what, delivers what he did was one he more creates, step, he, people look at it and say, yeah, this is great. Yeah, but what he, well, actually, what he did was he's, he's, he, you know, maybe, you, maybe you, you secretly got a conversation going on with Elon, obviously. You know, maybe <laughs> I didn't see that. Who's Fabio? Who's Fabio hoodie got he got on? But obviously, you know, what he's done, you know, what he did was the the truck. Yeah, he creates a wait list. Yeah, creates a wait list. Yeah, a prepay. Yeah, builds a balance sheet and then says, okay, I'll build it, and you'll see it in like three years. Yeah. Yeah. Also, and the also, if you look at the deployment of that product, 
he sits there in the presentation and says, what's the number one reason trucks are put off the road? It's not the diesel engine. It's not the tires. It's not the low. It's the windshield. If you've got a cracked windshield, you need to stop the vehicle and the vehicle needs to be repaired or picked up. The number one reason trucks are not useful and have the very expensive load being hand over to another truck or the truck being set aside and repaired is because of the windshield. We're going to put bulletproof windshields on all of our trucks. It's like, that makes sense. That That is understanding your customer better than it. Yeah. It's so logical. The guy walks into the room and does this pitch and it's so logical. And at the same time, nobody's doing anything about it. It's mm. like, how can it yeah, be? But, but, no, but what, what, I thought, what I thought was really, really, really interesting, and obviously I've worked in the open source uh, industry as open source software. You know, he's open sourced all the, is he open sourced all the designs? Uh, for from the batteries, the, the batteries. Oh, for the batteries, yeah, for the batteries, yeah. it's energy related, right? Okay. Yeah. But I mean, you know, because, that's, that, that's transformational, isn't it? That's trans- yeah. it's basically trying to shake the industry and say, look, here I'm giving value to create adoption, to create, to create people, that will get people to embrace it. So what, yeah. what's, so, so what's, so what's Elon's secret plan then? Well, he's taking he, over. Hey, Elon, yeah. Elon, stop ringing me. Will you stop ringing me? Well, I'm on the call with <laughs> JP and Derek, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like, it, th- that's the beauty of the master plan. Um, that it, it just, you know, he puts it in plain sight. And the reason why the company is worth so much, because it is in plain sight, and he's delivering step after step. So if you look at it as an investor and looking for something that creates equity value, you say this company mm. is going to worth a lot when he does this. And he's like, oh, step one, completed. Step two. When you see him complete step eight, you think, this guy's going to do it. <laughs> you know, he knows it and understands the investment industry so well mm. that he puts his secret master plan available for people to read, not because he's trying to be cocky, because he's saying, look at me. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to deliver after one after the other. That's why the company wasn't making any money. Mm. And it was the top, you know, the most valuable company in the world. Why? Because people looked at him. He's like, I want a piece of that. This guy's going somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. I mean, what what he's what he's 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 kind of books the trend of the you know he's he's a very accessible you know he goes on Twitter on Twitter Spaces and he's like doing you know AMA basically. I mean, he's like he's he's a completely accessible kind of individual. Yeah. One of one of my I don't know if you've you've seen some of my my other episodes, but um. Dennis Tudor, who came on, he's based in Switzerland, um, and he's he's basically he worked at SpaceX with uh, with Elon. He's known as Elon, uh, and he's working on the um, Swiss Pod, which is basically the, you know the new transport system. You know, with the um, that, that was you know obviously uh, originated out of the SpaceX project. So you know he's just getting funding and you know creating his own kind of uh, new transport system in Switzerland. So. It's it's amazing, actually. It's, it, you know, he, 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 Elon, I suppose, is truly a, a a person that's actually mapping out a vision and executing on the vision, yeah, and and building a, a personality and kind of playing with things like social media platforms, like Twitter, mm-hmm. like it's just like part time. Um, also, so, so bit... switched on to understand what investors are looking for, right? Mm. It's like there are four, maybe five, huge players in that market, and from the go. He's putting his secret master plan there saying, even if I tell you what I'm doing, you four guys cannot do this. I'm doing it so that investors know what my steps are. So that when I achieve those steps, it makes sense. It gives context to my move. Nobody would have invested in Tesla if it would have just been a roadster company. If you tell me I'm building a roadster, like that's that's great. Yeah, what what you're saying is people are investing in the plan and the long-term the long-term strategy basically. and seeing it delivered yeah. right yeah yeah which is consider yeah. consider that uh, as an early stage founder when you're pitching to an investor considering the questions that they're asking themselves right they're asking themselves number one can i see that there's any momentum so far to date mm. you know has this has have they gotten anywhere so far then apart from the team question they're also asking themselves 
is this a business that's going to 10 times my money in a few years? That's the other one, right? That, that's well, the yeah, this, this, is, this is the thing about, is, do I follow the money? Is this a one-off or is this a follow the money as well, isn't it? You know, is this a follow-on investment as well? Yeah, they might be considering that, exactly. But, it, but, but it, I guess in this case, it's more from the standpoint of, can they tell a story to me that, I, that I'm going to buy into that I think mm. is credible about them getting to, you know, 10 times the size, you know, 10 times the value that I'm investing in right now? Mm-hmm. That, that is the, that, and that is what the master plan is all about. It's about being able to articulate that to an investor um, rather than just saying, oh, we're going to be the Uber of this or the Amazon of this. And it kind of all sounding a bit wishy-washy and kind of, you know, hopeful, but, hyper, but very hypothetical. Yeah, a bit, a bit gray. Yeah. yeah, very great. You know, there's a lot of p- pictures that you see you're just like, I mean, what is this? There's nonsense. You just this is just your vision, but who cares what your vision is? Let's see what the steps the steps that you're actually going to take to get there. Which is the whole mm. point about Tesla's not so secret master plan, which is that he articulated the steps to get there, right? Yeah. And that's what that's what you need to do as an early stage startup founder is like as far as I'm concerned right now, with the information I have, et cetera, these are the steps that I believe I need to take in order to create a business of this value in future. And this is why each one of them builds on the one previously mm. in order to, um, in a logical way, in order to make that possible. And, you know, we believe, obviously, that if you can do that, then you're, then you're able to much better answer that question to investors. Because we've had founders come back to us and say, oh, they really like the idea and the pitch and all that, but they still had a question about, you know, is this business really going to be big enough in the future? You know, what are they really investing in? Like, does this really fit their thesis? I'm like, guys, right. did you have the did you have the Nanex, Nanex future more, slide more, there? More hurdles, yeah. more hurdles. Yeah. We were yeah. like, oh, guys, did you include the Nanex future slide? They're like, oh no, no, we didn't include that. Well, I was like, well, there you go. Why? <laughs> you couldn't articulate. Yeah, you okay. Couldn't, you, couldn't, you, 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 didn't, you didn't. You didn't cover that objection in your exactly. your deck, exactly. yeah, exactly. or your story. What yeah. we're it, doing there, there, there was, with all there the recipes, there was covering the objections. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You're answering all the questions that an investor is going to be trying to ask in here. while they exactly. are looking at your pitch. That's yeah. why JP says, this is what you need to think about. What is true about your startup the day you walk out of that room with a deal? Mm. It's because you've been able to answer that question, that question, that question with compelling evidence, right? That is the mm. thing. Evidence of interest, evidence of traction, a master plan that gives them confidence that you can actually 10 times this business. That is what you need to have. That is the, that is the entire point of the recipe that we are talking about in the book Traction First, which, you know, that's what this is all about today. This is, so, this is the thing. So we've now got a movie coming out of Who's Fabio. We've got a swag <laughs> that's going to come to my door. And we've also got now a recipe book. Yeah. Are you saying that you, you're on the waiting you're list? Gonna, you're going to be, <laughs> be, be, be having a cookery program next where we're going to do these kind of like... <laughs> ba- yeah, yeah. We're going to be baking Life a velvet... A, a red, yeah. a, what was it? Velvet red cake? A red velvet cake? Yeah. So we're going to have like, who can make a red velvet cake in the quickest time? Go. Yeah, right. not just that. Who's going to come back for seconds for who's wearing red, red velvet? Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then and then JP's eating it all, or me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to discount that result. Yeah. <laughs> so, quick question. I mean, obviously, we've had a very, very in, interactive and, and it's been a very helpful conversation about all that, that, those topics. Do you think it applies to B2B and B2C, or just B2C, or just, is it, is, you know, do you think it applies to both types of Definitely scenario, both. Business, types of business? Yeah, definitely both. They're just like different parameters that you would apply, right? I mean, if you're building a waiting list for B2B, it's obviously very, it's very different to building a waiting list for consumer. I mean, you know, getting getting five um, uh, like SMBs on a waiting list or getting three people with an LOI or getting, you know, two pre, pre-orders, pre um, you know, is the equivalent in our mind, in ter- you know, versus the waiting list of consumers of like a thousand people for consumer products. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because all you're trying to show is that there's evidence of real interest. And what does that mean in your particular space? You know, whether it's B2B and even in your particular niche, because even in consumer, you know, if you're in a very small niche market versus some something massive with with wide appeal, obviously having 500 people on a waiting list, each one is not equivalent. Right. If you if you're talking about a very niche market of like, you know, some some very small interest that people have, like sailors is obviously a very niche market compared to. A very uh, a social media product with massive appeal, right? This is always talking about something completely different there. But having mm. a few hundred sailors on a waiting list is really good, right? You know, that mm. might represent something meaningful in that industry that we're talking about. Versus, if you've only got three hundred people on a waiting list for a widely appealing social media product, it's like, well, that's you know, that's not really that compelling. Yeah, it's is not, it? yeah. I'm it's not, just, you, it's you, not you, proof. I've just, I've just, I've just yeah. sort of two more ideas. We've got a movie swag. 
red velvet cakes. I'm just when you were talking about waitlist, I was just thinking about a nightclub. Yeah, <laughs> 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 have a night, and we could have a retail store because obviously, you know, London, you know, people queue. People like to queue in the UK. Yeah. So, There's you know, this famous there you go. Japanese. It's like a conglomerate. T-shirt. It's like the Who's Fabio it's conglomerate. The empire is yeah. built. <laughs> the empire. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll get, we'll go down the Star Wars route then. No, we don't want to go there. No, 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 and I can feel like you're going to be coming back on the show in the future, actually, you two, because it's, it's been very entertaining today. Um, what are you most excited about in 2023? Darren, do you want to go? JP's passion, so I'll, 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 let, him, I'll let passion begin this, begin um, this one. <laughs> um, like, we've been working in the space for a long time. And I feel like this this year is, like, we wrote the book as a way of, like, trying to reach more founders and to help more founders. And we've we, we think that that's a great way of, you know, making sure and communicating that there's a better way of starting up. Um, mm-hmm. What we want to achieve this year is to be able to um, help and reach, help and reach, like scalable amounts of founders. Like in the past, we've worked with like you know, 10, 15, 20 founders at the same time, and so forth. The the book, the program, everything that we've built is designed so that more people can access a way of starting up that is not about struggling and it's not about, you know, one in a hundred making it to the other end. We want to get as many people out of the desert as possible, right? There's a lot of people lost Mm. in the desert. Our objective of this year is getting You are the oasis. There you go. It's a band. It's a band. It's like you are the oasis. It's like... (laughs) Actually, we we prefer to be the settlement. You're triggering all these analogies for me, you see. That's the thing. That's the problem. Sorry, Darren, what are you saying? Uh, I, I would prefer to be characterized as the uh, the settlement on the edge of the desert where you're finding <laughs> freedom. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's the objective that's, for this year, getting as many people out of the desert as possible. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and for us, I think that means, yeah, um, sharing the book with a lot more people, but also being, um, you know, building our community that, um, off the back of that book, which we're doing as well, of startup mm-hmm. founders who are all working together with a single common goal of um, uh, getting the startup off the ground and raising the first round of funding by implementing the recipe. That is what that's what we want to help everyone to do. That's the way that we're offering, right? Um, and that's that's what we what we wanted to articulate in the book and offer to people as you know what we believe is a better way for them to start up, a better way for them to reach their goal with their tech business. To be, to be able to build something that um, will attract investment so they can make this this idea they have a reality, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it can be a very fulfilling journey being an entrepreneur, particularly a, a startup founder. And um, we, we, we want to offer this path to people that, you know, it's the distillation of all of these different frameworks and tools and books and other things that we've read, 90% of which we've thrown out, the rest of which we've distilled and simplified into a way that we know that people can follow because we've seen it again and again and again. And as we said, you know, 72% of, this, of the founders in our program who follow this recipe go on to raise at least 100K or more. And that is we've what got we're founders that are 15 years old and secured 100K. Yeah. Think about that. And it's you not know, the secured 100K because they met a lot of investors. They secured 100K because they implemented the recipe, because they sat down and it's like, I got 3,000 people on a waiting list. I have 150 of them on the product pilot, and 50% of them are still there and would like more. Can you please help me build some more? It's, mm. it's a different pitch. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a couple of points just triggering in my head. It's like, it's not burn the boats, it's burn the books. Maybe that's yeah. going to take away from the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like Guy Fawkes, there's this big bonfire outside JP's yes. and uh, yes. Darren's house. That would that would make a great ad on Instagram if we just got all the yeah. startup books <laughs> and we just like put them on the bonfire. Like, what, guys... burn the books? Burn the books yeah. sponsored by Waterstones. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Burn the books um, while trying to get people to read a book, right? Yeah. <laughs> what are you book? What are you book? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could burn traction. You could like you know, like big boxes of traction. You just put in, you know, on the on. No, maybe not. No, no. Sorry, that's the wrong marketing campaign. Um, no, I, I have had. I don't know if you know this, but I don't know if you've seen him in. Um, so I have. I have had my youngest. My youngest guest was fourteen on this oh, show. Really? Um, a guy called Mike Wimmer. Um, he's been on the Ellen Show, and uh, he's a startup founder yeah. actually of two startups already. Yeah. Um, and he's called the real Tony Stark. He's a, he's like a boy genius. I mean, a brilliant guy. And um, 
My, 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 what I'm excited about is at some point in the future, I will get my two sons, Ben and James, on this show with Mike Wimmer. And Mike has actually said, I'll come on the show. When, when my sons found out that actually Mike could be on the show, he said, what? Somebody younger than us has been on the show. I said, yeah, you need to come on the show. So anyway, <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm excited about. At some point in the future, they'll come on the show. Anyway, um, the, way we, the way we finish off most episodes, actually, we just, a couple of things was, I suppose, what would be the, um, I don't know, you, you, you've dropped a lot of, um, I know some people say value bombs or, yeah, a lot of value in, in today's episode. So I appreciate you. And thank you for doing that. Um, what would be, if you were going to summarize it into some, you know, a couple of points to, to wrap up the episode today, what, how would you articulate that? What would be the kind of the main big takeaways? Apart from, obviously, looking forward to the movie and all those other things we talked about in the future um, and the swag, particularly the swag. But um, what, what would be your final takeaway comments on, I can on do today's one, episode? And Darren can do another one. How about that? Right. I wrote an right. article right. last week that says, stop drop and build a waiting list. Um, if you take anything from this conversation, if you're an early stage founder, that it's pre, pre-seed, meaning you've not done your first round of funding and you're looking to build your product, I would say stop, drop, and build a waiting list. Do not try to build dropping? your product. What are you, what are you dropping? Are you dropping, dropping the mic or dropping the keyboard? Drop everything or... you're, you're selling. selling. Exactly. <laughs> Stop. Drop, Drop everything give me, you're Give doing. me 10. Give me 10 <laughs> press-ups. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Drop everything that you're doing. Right? Drop ev- Stop and drop everything that you're doing. Stop your conversations with investors. Stop. If you don't have a waiting list, you don't have customers, build a waiting list. Don't do anything else. That will be my message. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 I really want to dilute that message, actually, because I think that's one of the most important ones people take away. And, you know, it's basically think in terms of traction first. And, you know, if you haven't got a waiting list, that's the, that's the first thing you can do. If you do have one, the next thing is to work in product pilot. And just remember the three ingredients of the recipe, because those are the questions that the investor is thinking if you're going into that meeting. And if you don't have that, um, yeah, it's going to be much, much more difficult for you to get your startup off the ground, number one. And number two, raise that first round of funding. Fantastic. A working recipe. Working recipe. We're going we're gonna to do the F- next episode when you come back on the show in a, in a kitchen. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> joking. Well, we actually do film our, our video shorts in JP's kitchen. Oh, that's right. You do, don't you? Yeah, sorry, that's, that was my first experience with JP. We were in the kitchen. He didn't have an apron on, but, but you know, maybe it's in the future. We should get some uh, Fabio aprons. Now, that would be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, in terms of finding out more about what you guys are doing, obviously for people that are listening to the, today's episode, what, what's the best way of, um, obviously apart from hanging out in kitchens, but what's, what's the best way of finding you guys and knowing a bit more about what, what you do and how they can collaborate with you? Yeah, just typing who's Fabio on, on, on Google will do it. I don't think there's another company that's called who's Fabio with a question mark. So just type that in and just go into the <laughs> website and we explain everything that we do. So natural search bangs right at the top of the search. Okay. Who's Fabio.com, people? Who's Fabio.com? Read a little bit about us. If you'd like, get the book. Um, and then, yeah, we're, we're building a community of, of like-minded founders who are implementing the recipe, trying to get the startup off the ground, raise the first round of funding. That's what we help you to do. Yeah. Read the book. Okay. And if you think that that's the way for you to get to the other, to get out of the desert, get involved. If you read the book and you think it's interesting, but it's not for you, please don't get involved. We just want to work with people that think that that's the way to get out of the desert. <laughs> Why? Because we know it's the way to get out of the yeah, desert. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that, that was Juan Pablo, JP, yeah, and Darren um, from Who's Fabio. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been absolutely Thanks, Andrew. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thanks so and, um, and that was Andrew Turner, founder and host of the GNC Sessions podcast. Tune in in the future for another episode of Andrew and JP and Darren in the kitchen. No, we weren't in the kitchen today. But no, thank you. Thank you for joining today's session and um, catch up soon. Thank you very much.